You're listening to Schmidt Talks, the podcast wing of SchmidtTalks.com, with writer and blogger, Heather Christina Schmidt. With a new episode each week, Schmidt Talks talks about all the things you never knew you needed to hear about in these truly dystopian times. From politics and current events, to life and living, Heather covers it all in this philosophical and introspective show. Come back every Monday for a new episode, and get more info on Heather and her work at SchmidtTalks.com. And now, for the show. Welcome to Schmidt Talks, the podcast wing of my long-running blog at SchmidtTalks.com. My name is Heather Christina Schmidt. I'm a mom, I'm a writer, and I'm a critic of pretty much everything. Those of you that have been around for a while know that. I have degrees in political science, philosophy, public administration, I worked in pharmacy, I've worked for the Democratic Party, I ran for city council in 2020 at the height of the earliest days of the pandemic, and I also just enjoy sharing my life experience alongside all of yours. A little housekeeping. I'm relatively new to this podcasting thing. So if you notice changes here or there, little tweaks and such, it's because I'm working out the kinks. I suspect I'll be doing that for a while. If you have suggestions, please head to my website, click contact or slide into my DMs on your social media platform of choice. Give me all of your thoughts. I love constructive criticism and tips. I decided to do this podcast in seasons, and each season has a theme. This first season is Words Matter. We are living in truly dystopian times, and I believe that a lot of it has to do with the loss of meaning to our words. Today's episode in particular will go much more into depth on what I mean about that. Each episode I like to keep short and sweet, just like my blogs it should be 30 minutes or even less to digest. That way we can get to the heart of the topic, make the points, and leave you all with more to think about for the conversation to continue. This is, after all, a conversation. This is just a starting point to change. Today's episode, our word, is a little bit more philosophical than in the last several weeks, though I did tell you all that episodes may be about politics, philosophy, life, whatever the mood strikes. Today's episode, our word is truth. I still remember the first time uh, very early on in the Trump administration, way back in early 2017, when I was watching the news with a newborn in my arms. He's five now. Uh, And Kellyanne Conway said a term I realized only now had been growing in use over the decades that preceded that moment, that moment in 2017. Today, it's pervasive. It's a pervasive term and it's a pervasive concept. It's something we've come to accept. That term, alternative facts. Alternative facts, what a crazy concept, right? It's oxymoronic when you really look at the literal definition of each part of it. Facts are things for which there are no alternative. And yet here we are now living in a world in which alternative facts are what a very large number of people believe explain their understanding of reality versus the next guy's. The idea that we would get to a point where people believed in alternative facts is nothing new. For centuries, philosophers like Nietzsche, Russell, and more recently Richard Rorty have warned about the consequences of perspectivism or relativism in their writings. Nietzsche, well, he kind of argued in favor of it, but what he was arguing for was not what we're seeing today. He argued for adopting this idea that uh, we have empathy, that we understand that people walk in different paths. It was not about that the idea that one reality is different for one person as the next person and that they're both equally valid. To some degree, I get it. Nietzsche's concept of it. It's the ultimate guide to having empathy for others, right? Understanding that their reality, their experience is much different than yours. 
But that's, again, it's more of an experiential or an existential statement. It's not about what's real or what is really happening. And more to the point, you can't use what your experience was to invalidate that of others and call it an alternative fact or a fact. Nietzsche's was about life experiences, walking a mile in another man's shoes or putting yourself in somebody else's position. Not for certain an alternative reality based in fact. Now, later philosophers, especially Rorty, warned about the consequences of this age of America in particular, that alternative realities and empathies skewed in this kind of weird direction, while applying it to America's brand, the American brand of selfishness, it would usher us into an era of post-truth, one where nothing is true anymore, because everything is true where people go on live television and argue for the existence of alternative facts, not alternative experiences or perspective, alternative facts. This is it. So I think we need to first, uh, we need to clarify here uh, something that, you know, that there is no such thing as an alternative fact. I'm not arguing that alternative facts are real. I'm saying that this is what people believe and it's rooted in fantasy. This concept needs to be wiped from our culture entirely. Words have meaning. A fact is something that is proven and you can understand that other people have a different life without uh, determining that it's fact for them and your fact is for you and the two are incompatible. Our realities can be different and compatible and rooted in a singular truth. Proven through empirical or independently observed evidence. An example of a fact is that the earth revolves around the sun. This has been observed and really is not up for debate. (laughs) Although in a world of an alternative facts, It is. I like to think that alternative facts are a segue into gaslighting, which has also become pervasive in our culture. That if someone says this isn't true, or we have a different perspective on this, or that there are alternative facts to be considered, that this somehow makes what happened untrue, or that the legitimacy of it is lost, and it's invalidated. A great example, which is political, is of the insurrection on the capital of the United States, The one on January 6th, 2021, it happened. Many of us watched it. It was a fact. It was a fact that it happened. There are no alternative facts to change the reality of its occurrence. That it happened is true. Now, certainly there are different details and perspectives and people look at it differently, whether or not it was justified. That can all be speculated on and debated, but that it happened is fact. There's no alternative to that at all. Alternative facts are the gaslighter's fantasy that reality is relative, not only to a person's personal circumstances, the stuff Nietzsche and other philosophers talked about, but that those circumstances can be turned around and used to justify a denial of reality even absolute truth. Now, I'm not meaning to be hyperbolic when I say this, but I believe that this is a very dangerous position for us to be in as a people. I really mean that in terms of humanity as a whole. It is particularly dangerous here in America where we have so many cultural issues and many of them revolve around narcissism and a loss of empathy. I believe that it's gotten worse over the years. In fact, I and many others have been saying for some time now that with the Trump administration and Biden as well, we have leadership in our communities that just emboldens the absolute worst in everyone, that encourages selfishness, that justifies American entitlement and unironically a loss of the sense of perspectivism and relativists acceptance of, you know, the existence of other people. 
the idea that philosophers have talked about for ages that humans are equally valid. I think by and large people misunderstood the assignment and took it in the craziest and most extreme sense. That's where they came up with this idea of alternative facts. We need no, look no further than the way the COVID-19 pandemic has been, how it continues to be uh, handled everything in terms of leadership and public policy on the pandemic has been based upon a principle of selfishness. Even in the earliest of days, it was about what lobbies could advocate for their own interest the most effectively in each respective state. But the real kicker was when the Biden administration, the Biden administration, the people elected to have empathy, to walk in each other's shoes, when they began appealing to the selfishness of Americans, saying the quiet part out loud, so to speak, Rather than consider the people in need, the vulnerable at large, suddenly we had everyone telling us to worry about ourselves. Don't worry about anyone else. Liberals constantly talk about MAGA mocking masks in the earliest of the pandemic, but they too ripped off their masks and indiscriminately harmed others because of this culture of narcissism that my truth is the only one that matters. I cannot tell you how many times on Twitter, Facebook, and all of social media, I saw people, liberals, some of the staunchest advocates for COVID policy in the beginning say, well, if you haven't or you can't protect yourself, that's not my problem. That's on you. It's time to move on. It's a dangerous and a reckless policy, one rooted in that same sense of alternative facts, of my truth is the only truth, the result of which is that in the case of COVID, over a million Americans are now dead, many of whom, again, an observed fact, that were vaccinated and even boosted, but they were also vulnerable. Their truth was not the same. The inability to walk in their shoes and understand that they were still vulnerable and dependent on a community effort. It resulted in their death. This is the result of alternative facts, alternative realities. This is post-truth. But I want to get back to this idea of truth because it is actually, I think, way more simple than all this talk about fact and alternative fact and people's perspectives. It's also about as simple as what are your intentions and did you lie? When I was working on my bachelor's in philosophy, one of my survey classes had an entire unit on truth and lies. It wasn't as provocative as it sounds, though. We spent most most of the time reading charts and learning about the degrees upon which people can perpetuate a lie. I think of that chart, though, whenever I think about what is true or not today, because I think it helps to articulate the depth to which this whole alternative facts post-truth world goes. So we all know that there are a lot of ways that people can lie. And one is that they say something that they know for a fact is false. Usually this is to deceive. An obvious example is someone says, where were you? And the person responds, I was at work, when really they were at a restaurant with a friend. Of course, then you get into all these ethical conversations about whether or not the lie is justifiable. You know, like if, you know, a killer says he's looking for his victim, is it justifiable to tell them that they went right when the person actually went left? I mean, we're not talking about justifications, though. And that's the thing. The, the, the intention uh, is really not relevant in the point of, is it true or not? There's also the lie by omission. This is when someone deceives you and lies, but just doesn't say anything. In the example I gave about the restaurant, you could, you know, leave, come home, and you know, you were supposed to be at work all day. You knew you spent the day at a restaurant with a friend instead, but no one at home asked where you were all day. 
so you never offer any information, figuring no harm, no foul. This is lying, though. A lot of people do not consider it to be lying, but it is. You are withholding truth. A lie is to withhold the truth. So that means sometimes it's just keeping quiet. I have always thought that this lying by omission is more insidious than just lying to someone's face than outright, you know, saying no when you should be saying yes, because they didn't ask because they trust you. People ask questions more often when they don't trust you. They are silent when they figure they don't have anything to ask because they believe in you. And when you don't say anything, you are breaking that trust. I think of so many times, even recently, that this has gone on in my own personal life, but more to the point of how pervasive it is to our culture, our society, and our politics. So many people believe, again, about the intention. Did I mean to withhold it or did I just not think about it? Again, it's about what you did. You withheld the truth. You lied. There's another level of lying, though, of telling a mistruth that on the scale is perhaps the worst of the worst. When you lie to someone else, but you believe it's true because you've also lied to yourself. Nietzsche called that a double lie. Alternative facts, double lies that are double because you've even taken to believing them yourself. I think we've gotten ourselves into this era of post-truth, of alternative facts, and of this inability to know what is or is not real, living in the assumption that everything, or at least a good number of things are a lie, is that it's become so acceptable and understandable that lies are going on all around us. We just expect it. Even if they are only lies by omission, I almost don't blame people. At some point, you have to start lying to yourself and accept this bizarre reality because in absence of that, you feel like the world is hopeless. It's full of a lot of really terrible people. Or you feel like you're going insane. Truth has a very simple definition, though. It is reality based in fact. It's not about intention. It's not about ulterior motive. It's not about emotional perspectives. It's about a fact. This is a universal thing. There are universal truths. Personally, I think the answer is simple. We all must start speaking the truth again. Stop lying. Even if it's uncomfortable, and even if we weren't asked, It is the truth, not your truth. There are facts and they are indisputable. Words have meaning. Words and truth, they matter. You've been listening to Schmidt Talks, the podcast wing of SchmidtTalks.com with writer and blogger, Heather Christina Schmidt. With a new episode each week, Schmidt Talks talks about all the things you never knew you needed to hear about in these truly dystopian times. Thank you for listening and make sure to come back every Monday for a new episode. You can get more info on Heather, her social media channels, and all of her work at SchmidtTalks.com. Stay safe.